Hi friends, my name's Trish Roberts and you're watching Faint Signals from Vega. I wanted to share with you um, uh, a story by Joanna Lucas, um, who has written some excellent blogs for Peaceful Prairie Sanctuary, which is uh, an animal, a farm animal rescue sanctuary in Colorado, which has veganism as their moral baseline, uh, which is an important thing since if we're not vegan, we're, we're contributing to the endless amount of residents that are refugees of domestication in these sanctuaries like Peaceful Prairie. And Joanna writes about this one resident um, who is called Celeste. And I just wanted to share this short 13 minute story with you um, about Celeste. And um, it was written in 2007, but it's uh, very powerful. And this is just one of countless stories just like it um, that, um, that we will never hear about. And so um, I, I thought that I would share that with you. And that's why I've titled this particular, um, um, this particular, car, um, this particular video, Stories of the Innocent. So without further ado, I'll share this story about Celeste. Two years ago today, Celeste sang for the first time. It was New Year's Day, and we had brought her gifts of grapes, which she received and consumed enthusiastically, practically drinking the fruit off the stem like wine, her head thrown back, eyes closed, mouth open to receive the nectar and to demand more. She loved treats, she loved company, she loved stimulation, she loved novelty, and as we learned that day, she loved music. Celeste spent her short life a cripple. Hunched over, unable to use her hind legs, she sat up on her good days like a dog with a hump on her back. On her bad days, she just lay on one side and didn't get up at all. Rescued from a family farm the day before she was scheduled for slaughter, she arrived at the sanctuary with a broken back, and she never walked more than a few steps at a time. Although she did move around her safe world, her barn, by dragging her crippled legs from one place to place, and busied herself with rearranging the straw bales, the blankets, the feed bags, and occasionally her barn mate, Ponza. Once in a while, she got up and walked around proper on all fours as her condition worsened. She limited her activity to sitting up to greet visitors. And then towards the end, she spent most of her time lying on her side. There were many days when the only question was, is it time? And every time the answer was no. Not our answer, hers. She didn't want to be, quote, quote put out of her misery. End quote. It wasn't misery to her, it was her life, and it was fierce with meaning to her. We kept trying to measure her life in degrees of comfort, and those are important measures. But she measured, measured its worth in degrees of meaning, the absolute certainty down to the marrow that something is important, and degrees of joy not happiness, not pleasure, but the fierce joy of drinking dawn like spring water and eating dusk like supper. And degrees of love, not love that scintillates, but love that pulls you like a river, that draws you, body and soul, into the mystery of another day, despite the pain, despite the darkness. Her eyes were filled, were always filled with light, her mind was always awake, aware, alert, open to receive the world. Her spirit was strong, her will to learn, live and grow, absolutely unbreakable. The moment of triumph we recorded and celebrated in Celeste's life were the big, dramatic, visible ones, the moments that demonstrated our view of her life, of a full life not hers. Celeste stands up. 
Celeste takes a few steps. Celeste walks into the next barn on her own. Celeste visits the potbelly pigs and scares the bejeebas out of them. Celeste takes a mud bath in front of her barn. Celeste leaves her barn and suns herself on the front porch. Celeste sings. Those are very important standards. Health, comfort, happiness. But as Celeste felt all the way down to her broken bones, they are not the reasons why life is precious. On new, that New Year's Day in her barn, I was singing along to an old song that was playing on the radio as I was rubbing Celeste's belly. Glacial dusk sky, dead of winter. It was an old French love ballad whose rich words are meaningless to all those who don't speak French, just as Celeste's rich language is meaningless to all those who don't speak pig. But the music captured and expressed what we all feel beyond language. Celeste propped herself up, sat with her face a few inches from mine, cocked her head, and looked str me straight in the eye. I sang directly to her in, in French. She uttered a sound I had never heard before, or any other pig made. A series of open-mouthed, melodic, rhythmic, throaty purrs, a musical response. I repeated the refrain. She listened, wide-mouthed, as though waiting for her turn. I paused. She repeated her musical reply. We did this until the song ended, each of us responding to music, with music, to deep universal feeling, with like feeling. I've loved you for so long, I will never forget you. She sang in pig, I sang in human. We understood each other, not because we were especially gifted at interspecies communication, not because we knew each other all that well, but because we both knew the love, the grief, and the hope of being alive in a soul-burdened body. That New Year's Day with Celeste was a true blue new beginning. It revealed then, and it continues to reveal now, the only reason why beginning again a new day, a new week, a new year is worth doing at all. When the darkness of the world seems overwhelming, unstoppable, soul-crushing, when beings like Celeste who love life and sing of love are being slaughtered by the millions every day, when the pain of loving them seems unbearable, the answer is not to stop loving, not to stop caring, not to add to the world's darkness and despair. The answer is to love more deeper, wider. To love despite the darkness and the pain. Indeed, to love because of it. To love those who need it most desperately. Not only those we happen to like. To love because our love is profoundly, vitally needed not because it is self-gratifying. To love as though life depended on it, it does. This is what being vegan means, building one vegan day at a time, a space in a world where innocents like Celeste can simply keep what is rightfully theirs, their life, their freedom, their meager, pathetic, or truly magnificent shot at happiness. Refusing to take their lives simply because we have the power. It is the only thing worth starting a new year, a new week, a new day for. How many hapless individuals like Celeste would be killed just for my taste buds this new year if I weren't vegan? 100, 200, more? Isn't a single one, one too many? How desperately would each and every one of them cling to life, fighting against all hope to their last breath? 
What would their last sounds on earth be? What is the sound of complete despair? How many times would it be voiced this year, just for my gratification? Do I really want to start a new new year like this, let alone live through every one of its 365 blood-soaked days? Celeste lived left this world entirely on her own. She has been forced into existence by human greed and was trapped in a crippled body her whole life. But she exited entirely on her own terms, just before noon, one summer day. Celeste, wherever you are, I've loved you for so long, I will never forget you. This will be a life-filled life year. Maybe not happy, maybe not comfortable, but beautiful and true like your life. Worth living, worth beginning again. And that was by Joanna Lucas. And Joanna Lucas is writing about a resident at Peaceful Prairie Sanctuary. And Joanna continues, If living ethically is important to you, Please remember that there is nothing humane about, quote, humane, end quote, animal farming, just as there is nothing ethical or defensible about consuming its products. When confronted with the fundamental injustice inherent in all animal agriculture, a system that is predicated on inflicting massive, intentional, and unnecessary suffering and death on billions of sentient individuals, the only ethical response is to strive to end it by becoming vegan, not to regulate it by supporting, quote, improved, end quote, methods of reducing dairy, eggs, meat, wool, leather, silk, honey, and other animal products. Live vegan and educate others to do the same. So that's a powerful um, essay by Joanna Lucas and you can find more of those essays. I'll leave a link in the comments section. And I invite you to um, check out my website, howtogovegan.org, which um, is a podcast, a comprehensive vegan podcast, and um, it has um, a lot of information which is ethic about ethics because ethics is what will keep us vegan. Once you internalize the ethical position, there's really no turning back. You and once you have it in your heart and in your head, uh, then there's no, there's nothing really that will make you ever not want to be vegan. That's what veganism is. It's an ethical position which rejects using animals, sentient animals, as as our resources, as things. Um, so I invite you to, to join that, to uh, check out that podcast, um, howtogovegan.org. So um, that's really all I wanted to share with you. I just thought um, this um, essay by Joanna, um, instead of um, us looking at animals as this en masse group and faceless sort of other animals, faceless another species that we can't relate to, if we, when we actually look at the individuals and that's Every, every individual that's killed every, mo every moment, there's thousands of them killed every second of every day all over the world, individuals just like Celeste. Um, you know, when we put a, a, a face and recognize the real sentience of each of those individuals, then we really start to, to connect with what we're actually doing every second of every day. Uh, sorry, every time we sit down three times a day, to the food in front of us, that food was once a sentient being who loved life just like Celeste and who went assuredly went through great suffering before, you know, all, all during their life and at the end of their life and all for unnecessary reasons because we do not need animal products to survive. We can easily meet all our nutritional requirements from plants and other non-animal sources. And it's really not difficult at all to be vegan. It really isn't. And you'll realize that when you check out the information on howtogovegan.org. And also it's basically, um, 
you know, veganism is becoming one of the greatest social justice movements of the 21st century. And it really is becoming easier and easier to be vegan. But once you've made that ethical decision in your heart and, in, you know, when you, you know, gathered that information in your mind, there, there's really no turning back. And that's why I always talk about the ethical reasons to be vegan, because that's what veganism is. And that's what will keep us vegan. And just like any other ethical position, that is, um, that's what veganism is, being against racism, being against sexism, being against heterosexism, all those ethical positions, being against rejecting speciesism, rejecting violence. That's what veganism is. So um, that's why I share this story because I'm, I, I'm going to share other stories by Joanna because I want us to connect with the individuals who are on our plates, their bodies and, and their secretions, et cetera, are on our plates. And they were individuals just like we are. They were sentient. And um, once we realize that and we really connect, hopefully we will go vegan. So that's really why I shared this story. I hope that it resonated with you. Um, I, when I first read it, and I actually have a podcast episode where I share that story. And I also share the um, French song that um, Joanna was singing to Celeste at the time. And so you'll get to hear that song in the podcast. So um, I invite you, I'll put a link to that podcast episode, Why I Begin Again from How to Go Vegan, uh, so that you uh, can listen to the song because it's quite beautiful. And when you think about the ambiance of this um, interaction of Joanna and Celeste. Um, it's very powerful. And when I first read it, I, I, it, I, I couldn't, I had to stop for, um, I had to stop for a little while because it, it made me tearful. So I hope that you'll check out the podcast of that so you can hear the, um, the French song that, uh, Joanna sang. So anyway, that's really all I wanted to, uh, talk about today. And, um, uh, and uh, so I'll just leave you with that and hope and next time I'll probably um, um, read another story by Joanna um, well in a few weeks time okay well thanks so much for watching my name's Trish Roberts um, you're watching faint signals from Vega till next time bye for now